Hello, welcome back to Graceful Embroidery. And today, in the lead up to Christmas, I'm going to do a machine embroidery card. And uh, I'm going to show you how I planned it and show you some of the stitch out and then how I construct the card. So we're going to go over to my machine here and uh, stitch it out. Right, here we are at my Epic 2. And as you can see, I've loaded up a design here. I'm just going to swivel the camera around so you can see it. And you can see it's a bauble with ribbons and you may no recognize some of the um, some of the elements but some are new. Now I have this card here and I see it and we're going to secure it in place. If you don't have this facility on your machine don't worry all my designs come with a box round them as an optional um, file so there's always two versions of each design one with the box or the outline alignment stitches as I call them and one without but I'm just using the box on my machine oh, I've got to think where the uh, the go button is because I've been I've got an epic three now so the buttons are in different places You will notice there that I was just making sure that everything was smoothly in place as it was doing the box. Something's happened over here. It's a bit loose, but uh, most of those stitches are holding in place. So we're going to do the two ribbons. Now you'll find that there are quite a few um, ribbons on this design and they do have an edging, which I think is nice to do in a slightly darker colour. I'm going for red ribbons and I'm going for a lovely pale green bulb as you'll see so we've got sulky rayon 1034 on here and we're going to do the ribbons Right, that's our first ribbons done and I'm now going to do an outline around those. It's a triple stitch so it's quite, uh, it's quite heavy. That's the edging done around those ribbons. We have more ribbons later on, but they sit in front of the bauble. We are now going to stitch the pine, the little sprig of pine leaves or the needles. And I do this in a dark, um, 
hedge green and then we put white on top of that which gives you which gives the feeling of snow now if you didn't want to put the white on that that could be excluded from the design bring that forward so I can cut that jump stitch which failed to do. Another option instead of using white would be to use a slightly different shade of green. Notice how everything is staying nicely in place because these outline alignment stitches are keeping it there. Right, we're now going to do a little brown stem down the middle of those four sprigs. They do exactly, they do actually come from Rose Malling, my Rose Malling Christmas collection. given them a little bit more of a curve because I think that helps with the fluidity of the design with the ribbons. Now we're just going to do one little row of white stitches on top of that branch just to sort of um, complete the snowy look. You don't have to do this one. Now we have a few little sprigs with tiny berries on them. I've opted to do these out in a cream colour, just so that they stand out from the fabric. You could do them in reds. 
you need to experiment with colours and see what goes. But this is after much deliberation and of playing around. These are the colours that I went for because my card is white. Excuse me, I do know how to thread a needle really, it's just because I'm filming. Now we're going to do the bauble and obviously if you're going to change the colours of this design you start with the bauble and then match everything accordingly. I started with a very seasonal red and Christmas green colours but uh, I wasn't that happy with them. I preferred to go for this more subtle look. I'm not a red and green person. Now, this big bauble has underlay that's stitched first to, to hold the fabric to stop it from puckering. And you will notice that the actual, the surface, the tatami stitch, which stitches out the bauble is curved so that it gives you the, the look of a bauble that's not flat. Right, our bauble has stitched out and I hope you like the uh, the curvature of the stitches which emphasise the roundness of the ball. So the, we, are, we are getting a good way through the design. Now, the next colour that we're going to stitch out is the detail on the bauble. And I'm going to attempt to do this in some silver metallic thread. I confess I tried this on my new Epic 3 and it's waiting for a new update and it didn't like the metallic thread, which is why I'm doing this stitch out on my Epic 2. Now, I don't know if the thread will work on metallic thread. Oh no, it did. Now, the important thing to remember when you're stitching with metallic thread is to take the speed down. And I'm going to start right at the slowest possible. I think when you, once, you, once you've had something go wrong on you, you tend to be extra careful. So we've got everything set up on the lowest speed. I'm using a Schmetz top stitching needle, which has quite a large eye. So it should be able to cope with this Madeira metallic thread. Let's see how it goes.
the I haven't separated this this detail work with the with the outside of the bauble and I'm stopping at this point to decide whether to do the outside in a different colour. No, I'll go for the uh I'll continue. That's perfect, and because I had it at a slow speed, it all went through very smoothly, even that edging. Now, if you don't want to do that in a metallic thread, in a silver metallic thread, then you'll get just as good a result if you use um, Sulky Rayon 8051, which is called silver. I, I use it a lot. It's one of my favourite greys or silvery threads. Now we're going to um, fill in some of those gaps, as you can see. It's quite clear where the next ribbons are going to go. Whoops! Right, we're going to fill in that ribbon that sits in front of the bauble, and then we're going to do some holly before we finish the bow. It tapers off at the top there because the bow will sit on the top and I've tried to eliminate as many overlaps in this design as I could. Right, we're just going to do the edging on this little bit of ribbon. And it finishes there because of the bow that's going to go over the top. Now, apart from those, from this this detail work that I've put on on the bauble, there is no more extra um, embroidery on there. But I think you all agree with me that if you they uh, give you a nice opportunity to put little pearls and hot fix crystals on, and that's my intention. Right, we're going to do the holly. I spent quite a bit of time deliberating on what colour to do the the detail on the holly leaves. And in the end I decided that a, a white would be quite sufficient. 
but they could be done in a metallic thread or a, or a green but it needs to be a light color to emphasize the difference between that and um, sulky green I think it's called French green I can't remember it's hedge green one two seven two that I've done those leaves in Right, we're going to finish the ribbon work off now, which is the ribbon to the left and the main bow. Right, we're going to do the edging of those ribbons now. And then all that's left after that are the decorations around the edge, which are optional. three types of stars not on the bauble but round round the edges um, and each, each type of star is uh, has been allocated a different thread color so you can merge them and do them all in the same color which is what I'm going to do and to do that I'm going to use Sulky Rayon 1218, I can't remember, it could be called Whisper Green, Whisper Green, Grey, can't remember. It's a very light grey. Because I'm going to add embellishment and I don't want to do any more embroidery with this Halic thread, the first star, or in fact all three stars, are come from my celestial grace collection which was my most recent collection and the first first ones uh the first stars are quite detailed um it's a very unique bit stitch that crosses over itself an awful lot it, it it can be done successfully with metallic thread but i'd rather use just ordinary thread for this
Right, the stitch out is complete. I'll just put it on its side like that so you can see it. Now, I'm going to come back in the second video and show you how I prepare this and make it into an embroidered card, um, which I should be sending my sister this year, and how I give it a little bit of sparkle and embellishment. Now, this design will be available to purchase at Graceful Embroidery as a one-off stand standoff design. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching me put this together and I look forward to uh, seeing you back for the second part in this little uh, tutorial on making this bauble machine embroidered card. So thank you for being patiently watching the stitch out and uh, I'll see you in the next video very soon. Bye for now.